Now that we're in a new year and tryouts are on the horizon, I want to share a few things that I think will help parents understand some of the coach's decisions and understand things from the perspective of a coach. And, you know, I'm just going to list 10 items. There are more, but these 10, I think, are, are, are important. Uh, number one. So parents, you have to pay your team fees and try to pay them on time. There is a tremendous ripple effect if you don't. Teams have a set budget, and that budget is made up of team dues. So if you don't pay, that affects the team's ability to rent fields. It affects the team's ability to rent fields for games and, you know, excuse me, games and practices. Uh, If there are any other extracurricular activities, it affects the team's ability to, to, to do those. So... Paying your fees is, you know, it's, it's really important. Number two, uh, assess your, your life, so your life outside of soccer, and assess that, you know, how that affects your willingness to, to commit to three or four training sessions a week. Because when you don't show up to practice, we have a difficult time preparing for games. You know, it's difficult to, to, to go ahead and you know, expect to have progress in games when, you know, six or seven kids are coming to practice. So, you know, you have to taper your expectations also if you are not willing to, uh, to commit to the developmental process and commit to, you know, sort of making soccer a priority if your team's in a team, in a, in an environment where, you know, you're sort of pushing to be high level. So, you know, assess your willingness to commit and if you're not willing to commit, then don't take the spot from somebody else that, that is, you know. So um, number three is and coaches, you know, we struggle with this because, you know, we're, we, we live in an age where there's a lot of um, parents that just try and sort of take the initiative for their kid and try and, um, you know, be the voice for their kid, which I understand to a degree. But, you know. Let your kids learn self-advocacy through youth sports, youth soccer, okay? Um, Again, as a coach, we don't like it when parents speak for the kids, okay? Younger kids, we understand. Um, But when kids get, you know, to the age of 12, 13 and up, um, you know, we like to see them start to try and have discussions with the the coach, um, talk about what they think, how they feel, Go to the coach with any problems or any questions or concerns. We we like that, and it's beneficial for the kid in the long run. So when you know if you're a parent that likes to speak for your kid because for whatever reason you don't think they're capable, the kids are more capable than you think. If you don't think they're capable of articulating themselves to their coach, um, you know you're, you're you're depriving them of that opportunity. Um, number four, let your kids experience the meritocracy in sports and you know again it's not the meritocracy in sports isn't always perfect right you've got politics you've got you know sort of a bit of cronyism you've got different things that creep into the game at all levels right it's not just a symptom of youth soccer but you know i'm a, I'm a bit of a purist and I, I believe that you know the developmental process doesn't just rest with you know the amount of times you practice or the amount of games you play it's experiencing what it's like to sit on the bench, experience, experience what it's like to, to play and be a star and be needed and those sorts of things. So you know, if your kid's on the upper end of the spectrum or the bottom end of the spectrum in terms of ability, um, that's an experience that, that's, that's important. As a parent, you might not like it, but your kid is, um, you know, is learning how to, how to manage those emotions. So... That meritocracy gives, uh, it, it lends a lot to the learning and developmental process. So the, the purer we can keep that, the better. And I think a parent's job in that, in that situation, if your kid's not playing and the meritocracy isn't necessarily in their favor, um, is helping them work through those emotions and work through a plan going forward, um, talking to the coach and those sorts of things. Um, because again, after all, it's 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 all about the kid. You know, we have a team concept, but it's about each in, each individual kid and how they um, how they're managing their experience. Next is parents. It's it's really important that you try to understand your kid's soccer objectives. Okay, 
I've had par- I've had families in the past that say, well, my kid's with you, he's training, and you know I don't know what he wants out of soccer, and and I don't know the least thing about soccer. I'm just like, well, to to me, if your kid's in a high level environment, that's not enough. You have to know what they want out of the game. You can't just be a chauffeur and a and a, and someone that just writes a check because you then d- distance or detach yourself from their developmental process, and parents are very important in that process. Like, you can't just put all of the developmental needs on the coach. That process takes place when they leave the field and, 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 and you know, and sort of you go home, right? You don't want to sort of chastise them in the car, but, you know, asking them how they feel and what they think and, you know, letting them sort of open up to you, I think it, it matters. And if you have no, you know, if you have no framework for what they want out of the game, it's going to be difficult for you to sort of help them guide their thought and help them manage their emotions so you know you have to understand your child's soccer objectives even if they're young i mean objectives are going to change but even if they're young you've got to you've got to start to ask them what they want you know it'll help you next is one of the bigger ones so you know in a youth soccer team there's a lot going on there are tons of personalities there are parents that you know some want little jimmy to play all the time some parents have played in the past and they sort of understand the balance of the, you know, what happens when they're playing and not playing and they can sort of, they're a little more stable in terms of understanding that process. But the biggest thing is, if you have a question for the coach, don't speculate. Ask them, okay? If, if your question is, if your question is one that, well, if, if your curiosity is, fo- is centered around you feeling as though your child is being mistreated or, um, you know, you feel as though something's not being handled the right way, you have to ask. It, like, because you might not understand what's going on and the coach might be on top of it. But, and, you might, and as a parent, you might not even recognize how the coach is managing the, the situation or hand, handling the developmental process. You have the responsibility of uh, to ask. You have to ask. So, you know, I've, I've seen situations and I've been in situations where parents haven't understood necessarily what the what their kids sort of situation was within the team. Even though you know we sort of talk about it, but they didn't. They heard it, but they didn't quite understand because they didn't have a soccer background. And had they come to me, we could have. I could have sort of educated them about what we were trying to do and sort of team, you know, team dynamics and those sorts of things. And they would have maybe not agreed, but they would have at least understood. So by not bringing questions and problems to the coach, um, you know, and sometimes sort of maybe some families, you know, you have some folks that like to talk and things like that. It, it can destabilize an environment that otherwise could be very beneficial for their kid. So again, don't speculate if you have questions, whether they be good questions or bad questions. Ask the coach, and and but you know and and um, and those questions shouldn't involve, you know, my son's better than him. Why isn't why isn't my son playing? Those aren't those aren't the questions. Those aren't the questions, right? When you're putting one kid against another, the questions are: What can my child? How can I help my child have more success in the environment? Is there anything you see? That uh, that 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 he can improve. That I might I might be able to assist him with. But those are some of the questions that that actually have next steps and can produce positive results. Next, um, you know, most coaches care deeply about the kids that they coach. Like I'm one of them. Like I I care about my players tremendously. You know, um, some of them are like little brothers to me, and. Some and some other kids that I coach are are really good friends with my my son, and you know we we develop these relationships and we're 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 at, we're like helping again depending on the level your kid plays in, we're helping them like take steps towards their dream. You know some of them dream of playing in college, some of them dream of playing professionally, so it's it's a really important dynamic and and and, and bond that you build with some of your players. You know, we see them in their best times. We see them in their worst moments. You know, I mean, you're, when you're sort of, you know, on your last breath and you're working really hard, I mean, it's, it's really difficult. I mean, you see them at their, at their most vulnerable. 
and you're helping them through that that process. So just understand that, you know, often coaches are seeing these kids in a light that you're not, okay? And there's certain things that we recognize, some of us, not all coaches. I mean, not every coach is, is great, right? I'm not saying I'm a great coach, but I'm just saying I, I've, I've played professionally. I've won, I've played collegiately at the highest level, played professionally at the highest level. I've, I've won national championships as a youth player. Um, and I recognize certain emotions and feelings and disappointments. I recognize those things because I've been through it, you know, so... Um, you know, so I'm going to respond a certain way to some of those reactions that the kids give. And if a parent hasn't necessarily had those experiences, um, you know, they might not recognize what's going on. But, you know, again, coaches that have, you know, sort of put the time in, that are passionate, that are curious, give them the benefit of the doubt. Okay? Because, again, most of these coaches really care about your kids. So if there's anything in question, just give them the benefit of the doubt. The next is, um, this is important, right? Making, making any team doesn't mean that you're, gonna, that you're guaranteed playing time in meaningful games. I think a part of development is getting game time, right? So I, I believe that kids should play. I believe you should, you should be able to give every kid opportunities to play. However, in meaningful games, this is where the meritocracy comes in. You know, I, I, don't, think it's, I don't think it's justified... Um, to not put your strongest team out in games that, you know, sort of have high stakes. I think it's important to play your best team, and then you fit other guys in. Uh, but in, meaning, in those meaningful games, you, you know, you shouldn't expect that your kid is going to play or get a lot of playing time. But a coach does have a responsibility to get them in and get significant minutes throughout a season. Next, um, this is going to be a little tough, right? So, you know, I have friends that kind of coddle their kids, right? And you can't coddle your kids in sports. They're going to get kicked. They're going to take bruises. Like, it's, it's like, don't coddle them. Let them go through their spectrum of emotions. You know, disappointment is the other side of success, right? And if you win, that means you've left another team of kids upset and disappointed. So when you win, those kids feel the way your kid feels when he loses, he or she loses. You can't always be on the winning side. Um, losing is a very important tool uh, in the developmental process. And we try to use that as coaches. We try to use disappointment. We try to use, that. it's, a, it's actually a, a teaching tool. Losing, disappointment, and those sorts of things. So don't try and rob your kids of of the opportunity to handle those feelings and, and, and go through what, you know, and sort of walk through what that feels like um, and think about how to manage it and those sorts of things. So don't, don't rob your kids by coddling them. And then the last thing, like, th that, that parents really need to understand is coaches put a lot of time, thought, and preparation into your kids, into practices, into games, we th we're thinking about what to do well before practice. We're thinking about how practice went and who did well and who needs what. We think about we're, th we're planning before games. We're, after the game, we're thinking for hours about what we need to do next. Like, like most good coaches are spending way more time thinking about your kids, thinking about the team, thinking about how we could, do, how, how we could have done things better, thinking about what we might have done wrong. Like we spend hours doing this. Most coaches that I know, um, some don't, and that's, that's true. Some coaches are there for a paycheck, but most of the ones I know are there for the right reasons. They love the game. They want kids to do better. They want, you know, they want to do a good job. So just keep that in mind. You know, if, if, if you're ever questioning a coach or, you know, the team's not doing well and, you know, you're like, oh, the coach isn't doing this or that, like, like most coaches are spending a lot of time, a lot of time, a lot of thought, a lot of energy. So just, uh, just keep these things in mind, all right? And again, we're in, moving into a new season. I think, I think learning more is a part of, is a, part of a parent's responsibility. Um, I think asking the right questions, whether it's you know, to your coach or to your director uh, of your club, um, getting information about the club's objectives, getting information about 
um, you know, how, you know, sort of how your kid, how you can help your kid improve learning more about soccer, the rules in some cases and those sorts of things. You know, it's, it's important to educate yourself as a parent if you're going to be a participant in your kid's journey through soccer or some other sport. So I hope this helps.